Hello everybody. Today I would like to talk about first order circuits in electrical systems. Okay. A first order circuit in uh, electrical framework contains one independent energy storage element. So it should be independent. It's also one of the uh, important concepts. And it can be either a uh, inductor or capacitor. Okay. And the circuit should be described using a first order differential equation. Okay, so this, these are the two important concepts. So there are two types of uh, first order circuits in electrical systems, RC and RL circuits, okay? So one is like capacitor and resistor, and other one is a uh, resistor and inductor, okay? And uh, the good thing is the first order circuits are important, of course, for electrical uh, systems, but uh, in general, you can see analogs of first order and higher order circuits in other systems, such as hydraulic systems, like mechanical systems, and they're kind of everywhere. We can model these different systems using the same language, which is technically differential equations. Okay, So let's start with the, an, a very simple RC circuit, which has a capacitor and resistor. So as you can see, there is no like voltage source, current source, a dependent source, uh, or switch, which I will talk about in uh, a couple of different uh, lectures later. OK, so uh, in order to solve this uh, from a physical framework, it is kind of an initial condition problem. Okay, so we assume that at t is equal to zero, capacitor voltage is equal to V0, and the goal is computing V0 T, not, not V0, VCT or VT. Okay, so what is VT or T is greater than or equal to zero? So this is the basic idea. Okay, so this is the capacitor current labeled in the circuit. So we also use uh, passive sign convention for NR storage element. Okay, so this is also plus minus, this is VR. So we know that VC is equal to V, it's equal to VR, so it's good, okay? And we know that IC is equal to minus IR. Okay, that's good. So what is IC capacitor voltage? We know that it's equal to C times dv over dt it's dvc but we can just write dv because of uh, the circuit framework it's equal to minus v divided by r okay that's good so what we can do is we can rewrite everything like this okay so dv over dt plus okay 1 over rc v is equal to 0 that's good so this is the differential equation right it's first order, it should be very easy to solve that. Okay, so let's clean everything and solve it. Okay, we already know that. So how we can solve it? We need to find the characteristic equation, right? Okay, so it's uh, the whole idea. Okay, what's the characteristic equation? Characteristic equation there, it's a lambda. Okay, so for that, lambda plus one over RC is equal to zero. Lambda is equal to minus one over RC. That's great. So I know that my solution v of t is equal to some constant e to the power minus lambda t or t divided by rc. Okay, that's good. So let's analyze this a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to use this initial condition to solve the circuit. So v0 should be equal to v0, but we know that it's equal to c times e to the power 0, which is equal to 1. So c is equal to v0. So it's very simple. V of t is equal to V0, which is the initial condition of the capacitor, multiply with e to the power minus t divided by RC. So what is RC? RC is unit, the unit of RC is seconds, and it's called time constant of the system. Okay, And it kind of uh, determines how fast or how long it will take to reach to uh, convergence point, okay? So it's directly related with the speed or like the time constant of the system. Okay, so RC is the time constant, V0 is the initial condition, which we directly used for solving this problem. Let's look at the results. Okay, that's good. Yes, it's true, right? Okay, so as you can see, uh, even if uh, we use a differential equation, since it's first order solution is super easy. You only need to know the initial condition and of course, the time constant of the system. Let's solve an example. No, no. Okay, let's analyze this behavior. Okay, so this is V naught, and as time goes to infinity, it will go to zero because it's a passive element, and because we have a resistor. Okay, if you don't have any voltage or current source uh, in the system, the capacitor voltage should certainly need to go to zero. It will decay and just take rest. Okay, and this is, for example, at tau, one time constant, 
the voltage is equal to 0 0.3 times V0. And if I remember correctly, at 4 tau, your voltage becomes 2% uh, of, okay, 2%, let me write it again. Okay, so 2% of V0. We, uh, when the voltage or capacitor voltage reaches the 2% of its steady state value, okay, no, it's, it, it, we kind of assume that uh, it reached a uh, steady state condition. Okay, that's good. So let's solve an example, okay? So in the circuit, we have multiple resistors, which doesn't matter, okay? Uh, and you can recall your uh, knowledge on Tevin and Norton circuits. Uh, as we know that even if we have a very complicated circuit, we can always convert into a voltage source or resistor or current source or resistor, okay? The, only the uh, topology is slightly different, okay? So the question is, initial voltage of the capacitor is 60 volts, and uh, let's compute VC, capacitor voltage, and we have a convention here. As you can see, uh, and IO, and IO is the current in this direction. Okay, that's good. That's very nice. So let's analyze this a little bit. So what we need to do is, so we need to find an equivalent resistor between these two terminals, right? Okay, so we need to compute that, which is very easy, okay, because, so these are parallel, this is series, we can uh, easily compute that. So our equivalent is equal to 8 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 to the power minus 1. Ohm, of course, it is ohms. So if I compute that, it is equal to 8 plus 12, 6 plus 6. Ohm, of course, if I compute it correctly, it will be equal to 12 ohms. Okay, so the technically what I can do that, I can ignore everything here. Okay, so write 12 ohm and close the circuit. Okay, so it is technically equal to this. Okay, plus minus VC, and this is IO. As you can see, IO is technically equal to the capacitor current. Okay, that's good. So what we need to do is now uh, compute the time constant. We know the initial condition, so Vc is obviously easy. So what is time constant is equal to our equivalent times uh, the capacitance, which is equal to 12 times 1 over 3. It's equal to 4 seconds. Let's check. I think it's everything correct. Okay, good. So I computed our equivalent. I computed tau. Now I can compute uh, the uh, uh, other uh, desired quantities. Okay, so that's good. So what is Vc? Vc is very simple. Okay, so we know that it has an initial condition, which is 60 volts, which is very good. E to the power minus T divided by tau, 4. Okay, so we computed Vc very easily. Okay, then what is next? We need to compute IO. IO is the current going in this direction. Okay, that's good. So it's very easy because we know I know that this circuit is equal to this, 12. Okay. Plus minus. Okay, that's good. So I know that this is equal to this. And I need to compute this current. So IO is actually equal to minus V of T divided by 12. So IOT is equal to uh, 60 divided by 12, which will be 5, I guess, e to the power minus T divided by 4. Okay, let's check the result. I think it's correct. Yes, it is, of course, I need uh, minus 1 e to the power minus T divided by 4. <coughs> it's correct. Okay, good. So I specifically labeled this current. As you can see, when uh, computing this current, uh, I kind of treated the capacitor as a voltage source. It's kind of a voltage source here because we know it's voltage. We can compute the remaining variables in the circuit. Okay, but we know that IO, because of the passive side convention, is equal to IC. Right, so let's check if I compute IC directly from VC, of course, by taking the uh, derivative, can I compute IC and it will be equal to IO? Okay, so what is IC? IC is equal to C times dVC over dT. Okay, what is C? It's equal to 1 over 3. Uh, what is the derivative of this? It's 60 
times minus 1 over 4. Okay, e to the power minus t divided by 4. It is equal to, as you can see, minus 5 e to the power minus t divided by 4. Okay, so I also computed the current of the capacitor, which is equal to IO, by taking the derivative of the uh, capacitor uh, expression. Okay.